at a recent Houdini event, I was asking around for tutorial topics which people would want to have covered. And Luc Moroni pointed me to what's called waffle structures. And at the beginning I was irritated. What's a waffle structure? Well, the most well-known example for a waffle structure might be this, the Metropole Parasol in Sevilla, Spain, designed by architect Jürgen Meyer, and apparently one of the biggest wooden constructions in the world. I've been there, I really like the space, it's quite impressive, and I think with a few basic tricks we will be able to create a similar structure inside of Houdini. So once we started Houdini, as always, we'll start by dropping down a GeoNode just as a container for the geometry we will be creating, then diving in there. And in here for now, instead of using this really nice swept geometry that's existent in Sevilla, of course, let's start by using our own pig head and we can exchange this geometry later. Let's set it to easy for now and also drop down a subdivide node, subdividing this pig head maybe three times. So we've got a really finely resolved mesh here like this. Let's get rid of the background grid here in the display. And then for good measure, let's add a null in here and call this one in. So if you want to, work on different geometry, you can plug it in here in this node. And the first thing we need to do is create those cross sections, in our case in X and Z direction. So let's drop down a grid and set this to be along the XY plane and only have two rows and two columns. Let's leave it scaled as is, just let's ghost our pig head here. So this cross sects our pig head now and make a few copies of it using the copy and transform node, which will just attach to the grid. And the copy and transform, I will set it up to move the grid along the Z axis, 0.1 units and I don't know let's maybe make 80 copies of this and then after that let's use a transform node and switch to the tool handle here and let's just move this so it intersects the whole pig let's just move it to say minus two units like so let's copy and paste this small tree here and set up this second grid so it sits on the y and z plane like this and then instead of moving this along the z axis Let's move it along the X axis again, two units. So now we have this one plane, which is not what we want. So let's in the copy, set this up to be moved 0.1 units along the X and not the Z axis. And then in the transform, let's move it to minus two units. Now all these planes are intersecting the pig head. Now to get out those rib sections in those two dimensions here, we're gonna use two bool nodes. And first we're gonna create a bool node between all these planes and the incoming pig head here. And by default, if we highlight the bool, it is set up to do a subtraction. However, in this case, our input B, which is this one here, which should not be a solid, but instead is a surface. And then let's create an intersection of both of those geometries. And now we can see we are getting this, the individual ribs that we were looking for. Let's copy and paste this bool over here and wire in our second set of planes in here to create those ribs in the other direction. And now those individual ribs have zero thickness. So let's extrude those using a poly extrude to give them a bit of mass. Let's just wire in the first boolean in here into the poly extrude. And within the poly extrude, I want to extrude them just a really tiny distance, 0 0.02 units, just giving him this bit of thickness. And let's also add a background, a back plane here. So it sits flush and is closed on both ends. Okay, one done. Let's copy and paste the poly extrude over here. Now we can see we're doing the same thing for our ribs in the other direction like this. We could feel tempted to just merge those ribs now and call it a day. And definitely for a shot that's further away, that would definitely work. However, with these real life structures, you have cuts into those individual pieces here. So they slot into each other. And with the help of a few more bools and a few loops, we can create those cuts. So let's get going. But instead of merging those two set of spars or whatever you wanna call this, let's attach another Boolean and get out the areas where those two masses intersect. Again, setting this Boolean to just intersect and let's highlight it. Now we can see we are getting out these individual pieces here. That's where both of those masses, both of those groups of spars intersect. Now what I want is, I want to cut in half those intersections and add one half to one group and the other half of those intersections to the other group. So they get the appearance of those individual slots that we cut in there because the slots should not totally slice through each individual spar, but only cut them to half of it so that they can slot into each other. And to do that, I wanna take out each of those individual intersections here and work on each one separately. I can do that by using a for each loop set to for each connected piece, which will drop down a connectivity node, which determines 
which geometry is one piece, and then a for each loop. Let's wire in this boolean in here. And to see what that does, let's highlight the for each end, set the visibility flag on here, and let's check single pass and then scroll through here. And we can see this isolates each individual intersection here, so we can work on it separately within this loop here. Let's just work on the first piece, the one with the number zero here. And in theory, what I want to do is create a box which sits around this geometry, which I can do using the bound node, which creates this bounding box here. We can now see we've got a box sitting around the original geo coming in here. And I want to expand this geometry a bit. That is because the slots we're going to cut into our individual spars are a tiny bit larger than these spars. Otherwise, they would not fit. We can do that by adding a bit of padding here. Let's say 0 0.002 along each axis. Let's just copy and paste this into all axes here the upper and the lower padding, making this a tiny bit bigger than the incoming geometry, just padding it. And then I want to cut this in half. And instead of using a boolean or something, I'll just use the clip node, which is really fast, wire this in here. However, the clip node has the disadvantage that we need to find the origin of this piece and set the origin to exactly half of the height of this piece. So how do we do that? Well, with a bit of vex, which can also be written in a vop. However, you know me, I'm a fan of vex instead of vops. And in here, I want to run this vex code only once per piece. So I'm going to drop down an attribute wrangle, which I will set to run over details. So it executes only once goes in front of all the other nodes here. And in here, the first thing I want to read out is the bounding boxes center of this incoming geometry here. And I want to write it out to a vector on the geometry. Let's call this vector center CTR, and it should be equal to the bounding boxes center, which I can read out using the get bbox underscore center function here. And this only takes as an input the geometry stream for which it should find the bounding box, which is the geometry stream coming into our first slot ID zero like this. And now let's just check by clicking on the info symbol here, I can see I've got now my center attribute here, which I should be able to read out in the clip here. So instead of just manually dialing in the y position here, let's use a detail expression here. So we want to look up the detail on the attribute wrangle one we just created by the name center. And we want to look up its Y component. That's a component with the ID one X, Y, Z, zero, one, two, like this. And now we can see this sits right in the center of our incoming geometry here, slicing it in half with this open face here. To close this open face, I could either use a polyfill or just use another bound. In this case, both should work equally fast and equally well. So now we've got a closed bounding box again, extending only to half of the original geometry that's coming in here, like so. Now on the for each end, I can uncheck single pass, and I now get all those original intersections as bounding boxes, having only half of the height of the original intersections. Now's a good time to add a bit of color to this. So in those areas where we have those intersections, I want to make those a bit darker to give them the appearance of, I don't know, something laser cut, for example. So I'm choosing a dark brown color here, like so. And then let's attach a, another color node and feed into this the output of our poly extrude and giving this a bit of a brighter wooden ish color, maybe something like this. Okay, let's feed those two into another boolean. And in here, I want to take this input and from this input, subtract these pieces here. So let's move this into A and this into B. And then by default, the boolean should already be set up correctly to subtract the second input from the first, which is exactly what we're doing here. The only thing we're messing up are those colors here. And that is because the colors by default are set on a point. So let's select both of those color nodes here. And instead of adding point colors, let's add primitive colors. And now we can see the interpolation works correctly. And those slots in here have a darker color. So all we have to do now is taking our second set of spars, create those slots as well, and then merge those two geometries. So that will copy all of this here. So after the connectivity node. Let's just copy and paste this over here. And first for those intersections here, I want to just get the other half. So the lower half of those bounding boxes, which I can easily do by going to the clip node and setting the direction to minus one along the y axis. Now I'm getting the lower half of all those intersections. And then instead of booling this with our first poly extrude, let's just take the second poly extrude and wire that into the color node here. And then we can see with the boolean, we're now taking the other half of our spars and cutting the lower half into them. It's finally time to merge all of this using a merge node 
barring in those two booleans. And if I highlight this now, you can see we are getting these interlocking cuts in here with a bit of a spacing in between those, which you can dial in by the padding in the bounce node here. But that is my geometry ready for rendering. Now, if you are less into pig heads and more into mushroom shaped geometry, I have prepared a bit of geometry for you here. Let's just copy and paste it. I will provide that into your scene file as well. And this is just done by manually drawing a curve like this, wiring it into a resample node, making sure the outer points sit on the zero axis, and then using a revolve to extrude this and making this revolving shape here, which I can then again, like the pig head, feed into our input null here. And then after a bit of calculation, assuming that we correctly transformed those copied grids here, which we didn't, so let's move them over like this and like this and like this. So after we transform those grids, and of course, this could also be automated when we click at the bottom of our setup. After a bit of computing, we are greeted with this, a very finely subdivided mushroom structure. So we could dial in the grid's distance here and make it a bit larger. But that's again our waffle structure with all those intersections carved out correctly. Now we're ready for rendering. I will provide a scene file setup for rendering in Octane. And I hope you like this. It's been rather straightforward, except for maybe a few lines of VEX code. Well, basically one line of VEX code that gets me the bounding box center here. But apart from that, that it's all standard Houdini nodes and still a somewhat clean-ish node tree. The main part here was definitely getting those slots cut into our geometry, which is that bit of additional detail which Houdini allows you to easily create, especially with the help of the Boolean node here, which is an amazing piece of engineering as it's very precise. It rarely does mess up as compared to other Boolean systems and other DCCs and makes creating these types of structures really straightforward. I hope you had fun with this. If you want to support us or want to learn more about Houdini, Unreal, and maybe a bit of Blender, consider becoming a patron of ours, because it's through the help of our patrons that we are able to run Intag the way we do. And to everyone already supporting us, thanks so much. With a very special thank you going out to important looking pirates, Jellyfish Pictures, The Mill, Method Studios, Electric Theater, Pixonic, Rodeo Effects, Side Effects, Lusion, Style Frame, and Rafik Anadol Studio. Thanks so much for your support. And as always, we are intrigued to see your artwork. And until next time, as always, it is cheers and goodbye.